good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, today i would like to just uh, give you some of my preliminary work which i have started with this particular plant known as acmilla paniculata and this is uh, my uh, spot my place of work is the eastern himalayas and that particular area is that state is known as arunachal pradesh of india which is bordered by the international borders like china myanmar bangladesh bhutan so this is uh, one of the 12 mega diversity hotspot region of the world that is the arunachal pradesh the eastern himalayas and specifically specifically the arunachal pradesh so i am dr pallavi kalita hui working as an assistant professor in the Department of Biotechnology and Chemical Engineering, National Institute of Technology, Arunachal Pradesh, India. So, first of all, before going to study about Acmilla paniculata, we should know about this particular species of plant. So, this Acmilla paniculata, which is also popularly known as Pylanthus, uh, it's of the family Compositi, and it's around there are around 300 species distributed all over the world in the tropics and the subtropics. This is already uh, reported by Harold et al. in 1981. And already 60 species have been reported under the genus Acmilla by Willis 1973. Now in India, there are six species of this particular genus Acmilla. First is Acmilla calva, Acmilla paniculata, Acmilla radicans, Acmilla ciliata, Acmilla uliginosa, and Acmilla oleriaci. Now, this particular plant is a kind of ancient system of medicine for the treatment of a number of diseases like toothache, rheumatism, fever, skin diseases, purgation, urinary tract infection, pulverization of kidney and gallstones. Uh, this was reported by Agarkar, 1991. Even for the treatment of infections of throat and gums, paralysis of tongue, remedy for stammering in children, this was also reported by Wealth of India, 2004. This is the plant, and this is the family, this is the systematic position of the plant. So its local name is Marshang in our place. So it falls in the family Compositi. So these are the places. In, this is the map of Arunachal Pradesh. You can see it is bordering China on the northern side. And in the eastern side, you can see Myanmar and Assam. It is a part of India. And on the other hand, you can see Bhutan. So this is the area where I am studying this particular plant. And these are the spots where I'm finding the plants. So first of all, I started with qualitative analysis and determination of nutritive value of this particular plant. So here I have gone through the different extraction process, um, keeping in mind the different polar and the non-polar compounds. Uh, and uh, so I have to go through the different solvents so from I have started with different kind of solvents. So basically, I have found these four solvents to be much more better uh, while extraction of this particular plant, especially chloroform, methanol, ethanol, and water. Uh, here we can see that water is the most polar solvent, whereas chloroform, uh, when we um, relate with, with water or methanol, chloroform is a bit non-polar than water or methanol. So here we have gone through the different kind of tests, alkaloids, carbohydrates, glycosides, saponins, proteins, amino acids, phytosterols, then also with phenolic compounds and tannins, gums and mucilage, fixed oil fats, and volatile oils. So this is the inference which we got for uh, finally from these four different kind of solvents which we have selected ultimately. So methanol was giving the best result out of these four 
So we started our experiments basically with then, we have started with the methanol extract. So next we went for the nutritional studies. In the nutritional studies, uh, we have taken eight different locations of this particular state. And here we have gone through the different kind of moisture, organic matter, crude protein, crude lipid, crude fiber, and ash percentage. And also we went through the uh, different <coughs> mineral ion concentrations, like calcium, so sodium, potassium, phosphorus. And these are the parameters which we found out. And finally, uh, these are the different eight places from that particular state. Here we can see the calcium content to be high. So finally, the results showed that the preliminary phytochemical screening indicated methanol fraction of the leaves showed maximum presence in alkaloids content and other secondary metabolites like steroids, proteins, polyphenols, etc., which revealed their potent therapeutic activity. Proximate analysis showed the plant having high levels of organic matter and proteins. It also showed high levels of fiber and ash content. However, the plant did not show significant levels of lipid content. Among the mineral ion concentration, calcium was found to be the highest in our plant. Phosphorus level was comparatively lower, followed by potassium and sodium showed the least percentage among all the minerals. Next, in discussion, we came to the inference that um, uh, the, evalu uh, the evaluation of nutrient composition of Acmila paniculata leaf showed that it is highly rich in nutrients and therefore good for human consumption for the maintenance of health and vitality. It may also be inferred that this plant can play a supplementary role in traditional diet due to its high level of organic matter and fiber content and thereby aiding to food security and supplementing nutraceutical needs of local communities in future. The low level of mineral ions except for that of calcium may be the reason why this wild plant species is yet to gain public popularity and acceptance in urban ecosystem unlike the other species of this genus Acmila oleracea. Oh, I got it. You got it. <laughs> okay. So, so now after that, I went for the GCMS analysis of this particular species. And from the GCMS studies, here also we have taken the um, uh, methanol extract. And uh, uh, we have gone for the GCMS to study the volatile phyto components present in the plant. And here we have taken the helium, helium gas. And finally, um, from here we have found the results that GCMS analysis of this particular plant extracted using methanol uh, solvent extractions confirmed the presence of different chemical classes of compounds including amines, alkanes, aldehyde, aliphatic, aromatic amines, and ketone compounds. The GCMS analysis of this particular plant extracts using methanol as the extraction solvent enabled the identification of 21 major bioactive compounds. So uh, out of this, six uh, compounds were in the highest level, like stigmasta 5-22-diene-3-all. It is around 9.77%, so it was the highest. And second was 2E6Z8E and isobutyl 268-decatrinamide, that is 7.11%. This is also known as spilenthal. So, and the other compounds you can see, so they are one, the other one is having the third compound, it was having 6.76%, and then phytol had 4.93%, uh, and in this way we uh, found to be uh, six major compounds in this particular species. So these are the different GCMS parameters. So finally, here I have put in certain places, I have put red colored, but we should not uh, feel that these are, though the percentage, the peak area is very small, we should not take it as very inactive bioactive compounds. They are also very active. 
Uh, here also we can see 14 beta H pregna. So these are also very important bioactive compounds. Olean 12 and 3, 1. This is 2.44, the peak area. So here also, this is also very important. These are some of the individual compound spectra. So finally, in the discussion, we came to know, finally, in the discussion, the inference is, uh, especially, I have picked up some of the important compounds. And from these compounds, we came to the inference that carophyllin oxide has been found to have insecticidal and antifidin as well as cytotoxic activity against human tumor cells. It is already reported. And the other uh, next compound, which is benzafuronone, it is a analgesic, antidiabetic, antibacterial, and antifungal properties it has. So, and next is 2, 6, 10, trimethyl 14, ethylene 14, pentadecin has been shown to have anti-proliferative activity. Next is hexadecanoic acid, methyl ester, and has antioxidant, uh, nematicide, pesticide, anti-androgenic property. Then again, hexadecanoic acid has also lubricant properties. And again, next is 9,12 octadecadenoic acid. It, uh, uh, it has antimicrobial activities. The next is the other compound which we found, 8 octadecanoic acid, and it showed some antimicrobial and antioxidant activities. So next is phytol. Uh, we have found that uh, it is the precursor for vitamin E and K1 antioxidant and a preventive agent against uh, the induced breast cancer carcinogenesis. And also next is heptadecin. Uh, here we have found that it has antimicrobial activity. Then the other is spilenthal. Uh, spilenthal has analgesic, neuroprotective, antioxidant, anti-mutagenic, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, anti-larvicidal, and anti-insecticidal in, uh, activities. Next is argost 5 and 3 all has antibacterial, antifungal, and cytotoxic properties. So then the other compounds you can see. So here we can found, uh, here we have found that stigmasta, it has also some antioxidant properties. So you can see most of the compounds, they're having antioxidant, antimicrobial, and um, uh, different kind of uh, anti-inflammatory activities also. And but there are some compounds which uh, till date, however, no activity has been reported till date for the compounds like 2 pentadecanon and uh, bivendocinone. Uh, so these kind of, these are the around four compounds which we didn't, till date, there is no activity reported for these four compounds. So from the conclusion, we came to know <coughs> that preliminary qualitative <coughs> analysis of the plant extract of this particular species showed the presence of primary and secondary metabolites of medicinal importance, uh, like carbohydrates, proteins, flavonoids, alkaloids, tannins, saponins, volatile oil, gums, and mucilage. And the second conclusion is, the present study also showed the plant having high nutraceutical potential with negligible, uh, negligible toxicity, which may add a supplementary food diet for global community. Next, the GCMS analysis of Acmela paniculata thus confirm the presence of 21 major compounds of various chemical classes, including amines, alkenes, aldehyde, aliphatic, aromatic amines, and ketone compounds. Thus, this plant shows a lot of promise in future development of herbal drug, as well as high nutritional potential. Thank you. Questions about this interesting plant? How widely is it used? How widely is it used in India? Sir? How widely is this plant used? Sir, it is a wild plant. How wide is it used yes, sir. by the Indian people? Yes, a lot, sir. very commonly? Yes, sir, it is used by the local people. And the, the alleged benefits, are that anecdotal or is that 
documented in studies. In other words, you listed a lot of benefits of this plant. Yes, sir. Neuroprotective, antioxidant, and so forth. Yes, Is the evidence strong for those actions? The local people, uh, they have some kind of uh, belief in this particular plant, but we have started working on this. So they call it as to take plant.